options could potentially allow the average investor to purchase a stock at a discount. Um, Al, as we talk about these multiple assets, we, we all know stocks, but there's an asset that a lot of investors really love to use, especially like in retirement accounts, mm -hmm. by using the leverage, which is options. Right. Right. Because we talked about, we kind of talked about in the first two segments how expensive stocks are. Options could potentially allow the average investor to purchase a stock at a discount because right. of that leverage. <clears throat> Talk about the great benefits of options and why are so many people are using those in their retirement accounts. Yeah, it's probably the the asset that's growing in popularity the most, uh, but it's also an, a, an asset that you need to understand before you start using it, just like anything else. And again, you know the the risk management strategies are number one. But with options, you get a lot of versatility there. Options, options can be used for people that want to do very short-term trading, more mid-term, and then they also can be used in your retirement accounts. Uh, we had talked again earlier about the, the cost of stock. A lot of people, when they go into retirement, you know, they don't want to be buying more uh, equities. They don't want to be buying uh, shares of stock that might be a couple hundred dollars or, or more. Uh, they want to have more protection maybe over their retirement money. Well, options allows you to take a smaller amount and still participate as though you might have been involved in the in the stock market. Options can be used actually as a replacement for stock. You don't have to own the stock. You can actually use the stock market with options without actually owning stock. Uh, and also, if you have a stock position, let's say that uh, you want to sell something. And you'd like to get a little bit, everybody would like to get more money for something that they sell. What if you could actually get paid cash to wait until the asset went up in value and then you sold at a higher price? You can do that with options. Is and that this, like collecting premium? It's like collecting premium. And then you can do the same thing if you don't own a stock that's trading at, let's say, $300 a share. You would be happy to pay $180 for it. You can get paid cash with an option to wait until it goes down to 180 and then get in. So it's basically, it's paying you to wait, to wait until price comes to you. Uh, you can also use and, and should look at using options on your long-term portfolio. That's not something that you should put together and then just set, set it on cruise control and forget about it because you're missing out on a lot of opportunities. Uh, number one, to protect the profits that you might have over the, the years, your working years and also to get higher returns on your stock using options. There's a number of different things you can do. Protection is one thing that's huge. You can use options as a as an insurance policy, so to speak, on your in your retirement accounts. And, and understand that capital can be created in all three market directions, up, down, and sideways. Options can be used in all three directions. And, uh, and probably one of the few assets that really give you an opportunity to benefit in a sideways market. Yeah, and when Al is talking about the, the premium, I mean, think about it as like, uh, like an insurance company. We have insurance on our homes. We pay a premium every single month, right? Now, if hopefully our home doesn't, you know, nothing happens to it, doesn't burn or anything, the insurance company keeps that premium. So it's kind of the same type of concept as like an insurance company. And understanding that options allow, especially in retirements, uh, opportunities in up markets, opportunities in down markets, but also in sideways markets. And when you're trading options, you're not purchasing shares, you're purchasing contracts which control a certain number of shares. Now, when people are, you know, there's a lot of our listeners that probably have sp uh, company sponsored 401ks, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even IRAs, but they they feel they're at the mercy to that company sponsor. Now, when you self-direct your retirement plans, say like a, a, an IRA. So say if somebody has an IRA with whatever brokerage or advisor or, or company that's out there, it doesn't matter. Do they have the opportunity to say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Advisor, can I want to manage this on my own? Do they have that opportunity to do that? You mean with your own money? Should you be able to control your own money? <laughs> was that a, that was a, a, a duh? Yeah, that was a duh. Absolutely. It, it is your money. You can control it. You you can have many more choices if you direct uh, have a self-directed IRA. Uh, number one, you eliminate fees. We always talk about uh, your retirement money being protected, your retirement money staying with you. If you don't protect what you have, 
and you let something suck money away from you, it, it's going to have a devastating effect on on your lifestyle and retirement. Uh, in retirement, you know, we most people are in some kind of an employer-sponsored retirement plan. Yeah. Uh, and you think about it, what are the biggest assets that you have? It's probably going to be your house and your retirement plan. And oftentimes the retirement plan might be the biggest asset you have. What do you know about your house? Well, yeah, you know what the value of your house is. You know what the property taxes are. You know what your heating, cooling bill is. Uh, you know you know what the neighborhood is is made up of. All of those things, you know a lot about your house. But in reality, what do you know about your 401k or your 403b? People know nothing about yeah. it. They but don't even what? look at it. No, but you know what? That's not a problem because you can just call, what's his name? You know, the, the guy managing your largest asset. I mean, the guy that's that's a good guy, but... But you know what? You, you don't know what his name is. Exactly. Even if you might know who the plan sponsor is, but that plan sponsor is handing your money off to somebody that you never meet, that never meets you, has no idea really what your goals or your expectations are. And the reality of it is you're actually making the choices. You're making the decisions in your 401ks, and your 403bs, but you're paying somebody for the right to do that. You're paying somebody that gives you the opportunity to choose amongst mediocre uh, investments to begin with. If you look at mutual funds over the course of, of periods of time, about 90% underperform what they're supposed to perform with. The fees that I talked about, the, the, the sucking sound you hear in your retirement accounts are fees being taken out. Even if you just look at a, what you might consider to be a, a reasonable fee, which is probably not really what you're paying, you're probably paying more than that, but let's just say you're looking at a couple percent over the course of your working years, that could cost you 50% or more of what you could have in retirement. Think about that. Instead of having a million dollars, maybe you have 500000 Instead of having five hundred, maybe you only end up with a couple hundred thousand. Those fees can have a big impact on you not just because it's money taken out, but it's money taken out that's no longer compounding or growing for you. In a self-directed IRA, you don't have fees, and you don't just have access to mediocre mutual funds or, or maybe some individual stocks. You can choose the, the assets that we've been talking about, futures, forex, the foreign exchange market, the options. So you have the opportunity to participate not just in an up market, but in a down market, in a sideways market, you have the opportunity to have protection on what you have, many more choices, but understand that you, you need to know how you need to understand how those all those assets function. That's the the reason that people need to have the proper education. Yeah, and think about that. I mean, I'm glad you kind of shed some light on that. Think about that. If you're listening right now, if you don't know the the manager of your life savings, something you've worked probably all of your life for, there's a problem there. Yes. If if you do that yourself, you have your best interest. And a lot of people are thinking right now, well, I don't know how to do that. Why would I mm -hmm. want to do that? Well, you got to learn how. And where it starts is by taking some action. First, knowing what your options are or opportunities, I should say. What can you do about that? And then how do you learn that? How do you learn the skills? How do you learn the different techniques? Al teaches these investing classes and talks about some of these different techniques with retirement plans, especially 401ks, IRAs, some of the opportunities that you have when you do that yourself. The big one that I believe is removing those darn fees. It's that four-letter F word. Right. Al, coming up next, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit and do something a little new. And I know we haven't talked about this here, and that's why you're looking at me like I got two heads. We're going to do a little bit of a, a market update. We're going to mm. talk about some of the things that are going on in these markets, uh, some of the opportunities that we may have moving forward, but but exposing multiple assets to everybody by giving some names of what's uh, some of those markets. This is Josh and Al, Investing with Confidence. We will be right back. <laughs> 